it's Dana. Welcome to Made Every Day. I love sewing shorts for my kids, and I especially love giving them this nice, flat front finish. So let me show you how. My kids live in shorts for half of the year here in Texas, so I have sewn a lot of pairs in my day. And they're so much fun to mix up with different styles. You can add pockets. They're great for boys and for girls and for babies. Today what we're going to do is get in this nice polished flat front, which looks really classy. And in the back, we're still gonna have elastic, which makes it easy for kids. Here's what you need. About a yard of fabric and a small amount of one inch wide elastic. For these shorts, I'm using a pattern that you can find on my site. Go to madeeveryday.com, click on the shop, and you'll find them under kid shorts. There's a front and a back, and you'll notice on the front piece, this little line right here that says flat front. You wanna fold that under, just like this. And then when we cut this piece out, we're gonna cut it with this little tapered edge right here. So let's lay it on our fabric and let's cut. This one here, and this one here. You could trace around your fabric, you could use weights to hold it down. I prefer to just use my hand as I go around. Put my left hand there, and I just start cutting. Now if you were cutting this out of a fabric that had lines or a really specific print that needed to line up on both sides of the shorts, you would want to line up these two hem lines as you were cutting. But this particular fabric has these flowers all over it and you can't really notice that. So I can just stagger them as I have here. And I'm cutting two pieces at the same time. I have my fabric folded in half right now. So there will be two front pieces and two back pieces. Put those aside and let's cut the back. You also wanna make sure that you pre-wash your fabric and dry it before you cut your shorts out. I pretty much throw it in the washing machine or in the laundry basket to be washed with the next load of laundry right when I get home from the fabric store. Because then your fabric is all ready to go when you want to sew. Okay, set these pieces aside. We're gonna take our two back pieces with the right sides of the fabric together. And in fact, you could cut out your shorts with the right sides already together. That saves you one extra step. And let's do the same thing with the front of the shorts. Right sides of the fabric together. And then we are going to sew right down these two crotch seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So let's go to our machine. I'm just threading my machine here with some white thread. That's typically what I sew with the most. I always have plenty of white thread on hand. Just follow all of the markings on your machine. And then I love to press my magic little button here. Threads the needle for me. Thank you, baby lock, I love that. Okay, like I said, we are going to sew the two crotch seams, or as some people call it, the saddle seam. <laughs> you decide what you wanna call it. I haven't even pinned it, I'm just gonna start sewing down. And I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Come over here, forward and back stitch. And there we go, just go right down. You're gonna be amazed at how quick it is to sew a pair of shorts, and then you're gonna be sewing them all the time for your kids. When you get to the end, do a back stitch, cut your threads. I love this little cutting feature as well. And let's sew the other side. A little back stitch, go down. If you feel like you're going too fast when you get to these curves, just adjust your speed on the speed control right there. And then you can go a little bit slower as you go around the curved area. It's important to always use the same seam allowance as you're going the whole way down. Okay, there's the end, back stitch, cut your threads. Now let's press out these seams with our iron. Press your seam flat like that, and when you get to the curved part, you just wanna kind of pull your fabric up and continue pressing it like that. So you can get that seam nice and flat. Now do the same thing for the other piece. Okay, I have my back piece on the table. I'm gonna lay the front piece right on top with right sides of the fabric together. And now we're going to sew the inseam. Let me flip this around so you can see. I'm gonna line those up right together there where those two seams are. And I am going to pin this time. You don't need to pin in a lot of places, just enough to kind of hold it together. Now we're gonna sew this with the same seam allowance, 3 8 of an inch. Come to your machine, little back stitch. 
And then sew right down. Or I should say, sew right around. Do a back stitch at the end, cut your threads. And now, let's press that seam as well. Okay, when I pull the front of our shorts up to the back and hold this up, you can see it's kind of starting to look like a pair of shorts, except that the front is a whole lot skinnier than the back, which is great. That's going to give us the flat front that we want. So let's actually flip this so that it's right sides of the fabric together. And now we're gonna sew these two side seams. So let's pin those in place because you'll notice that you have to pull each front over to match up with the back. Like that, in a few spots. Do the same to the other side. Pull it over like this. And this is also a great way to make flat front pants or maybe even a flat front skirt. Okay, back to our machine. Using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, again, sew down each of those side seams. Do a back stitch. And then make sure everything is straight and looking great. Go right down. Sometimes I like to insert a little tag in the side with my brand, something like that. Just makes it look extra fun and unique. Cut your threads and do the other side. Okay, now let's go back to our iron, press those seams and create our casing for the waistband. I'm just pressing out my second side seam. Nice and flat. Okay, now we're gonna go to the top. Let's turn this right side out, which is fun, because then it's starting to feel like a more finished product. There we go. Press your waistband under a quarter of an inch to start with. This will help enclose the raw edge of that fabric. Do this all the way around. And now we're gonna press it under about another inch and a quarter, just enough so that our elastic, which is one inch wide, can get through it. So you can use that there and kind of gauge and measure how much you should do. That looks pretty good. Press that in place. And then when we string the elastic through, we're only stringing it through the back. And you know, sometimes I've bought shorts at the store that have an adjustable waistband and you could do that sort of thing. You could buy elastic that has little buttonholes already in it and you could sew a button on each corner and then your kids can cinch it as tight or as loose as they want. But to be honest, I find that that's a little more work and sometimes my kids don't even wear the shorts long enough to make all that work worth it. So I like to just sew the elastic in place as I'm going to show you. And they usually wear it for about one summer because kids just keep growing. There we go, that looks really nice. Now I'm going to pin just the back of the waistband in place because that's the only part we're going to sew right now. So. And we don't need to leave an opening like we did in our basic shorts because we're leaving openings on the side to get the elastic in and out. Now we're gonna go back to our machine and we're going to sew from one side seam around the casing back to the other side seam. Go to your machine and this time we're gonna sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge of this fabric right here. Again, we're only sewing the back of the waistband. So I'm starting at one side seam, do a back stitch, and then sew right around until you get to the other side seam. Go kind of slow here and make sure everything's looking right and not getting bunched up or messed up. Okay, I'm back to the other side seam. I'm gonna do a back stitch. Cut my threads. And now we're gonna string the elastic through. I've got my one inch wide elastic here and the length that you wanna use is half of your waist since we're only cinching up the back. My daughter's waist is about 22 inches, so that would be 11 inches, but I wanna add a couple inches just to give me some wiggle room as I'm working and pulling the elastic through. We're gonna cut a little bit of that off at the end, but it just makes the whole process a little bit easier. So there we go. How about 13 inches? Cut right there. Then I'm gonna take a safety pin, put it right through the elastic, and then Go in through one of the openings in the casing and push it through. And you just wanna push it through until this end is just hanging out a little bit here and then we're gonna sew it in place. And this is why it's nice to give yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room with the length of that elastic so you don't have to be so precise because oftentimes it's hard to do that. And there you go, you can see my elastic just barely sticking through. I'm gonna go back to my machine and right on top of this side seam, 
I'm just gonna sew a couple stitches back and forth and that will hold my elastic in place. Okay. I'm using white thread here, which will kind of show up on the side seam, but it's not very obvious. You could actually change your thread color if that bothered you. I'm going forward and back just a few times, just enough that you ensure that elastic is not going to come apart. Okay, just continue pushing the elastic through until it comes out the other side seam. And look, there we are. There's our little safety pin again. Pull that out. And remember that I gave myself a couple extra inches, so I'm gonna pull kind of a tail there. And just enough that I can see it all cinched up. And if you had your child around at the house, it might be nice to try it on and see if you've cinched it enough. If not, just go with the measurements that we just talked about. Okay, take this off and then sew this in place as well, right on top of the side seam. And then let's trim off any of that excess elastic that's stuck in there. Just like that. Now let's sew the front of the casing in place. I'm gonna pin it a few times just so I make sure everything's laying flat. Okay. There we go. Let's go back to our machine and sew it like we did the back part where we're going to sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge of that fabric. Back stitch, and then keep going down. Now, because this front is flat and it was kind of tapered, sometimes it might have a tendency to not lay completely flat as you're sewing. But I just use my left hand to help continually pull this down and make sure everything is laying as flat as possible. And we're back to the beginning, or to the end, the other side seam. Okay, there we go. That looks really nice. Nice and flat and sophisticated looking. All we have to do is hem the bottom and then we're gonna sew a couple buttons on the top. So let's go to our iron. Start by pressing the first leg under a quarter of an inch. This is going to give it a nice polished look and keep all of those raw threads inside the shorts. And you can hem your shorts any length that you want. There's no real right or wrong answer to that. It just depends on the look you're going for. Sometimes I like a really chunky hem. Sometimes I've made a mistake, so all I can do is a little tiny hem. So, you know, just figure it out as you go. Okay, that looks like about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna fold that under, press it in place. Okay, the first leg is done. Now let's press the second leg. Again, a quarter of an inch. And you know, people sometimes ask me if I sew all of my kids' clothes because they know I sew a lot. And the answer to that is definitely no. But I often like to kind of do a, I guess, semi-homemade outfits for my kids. If I sew a pair of shorts, I'll typically buy a t-shirt to go along. Or if I sew a t-shirt, I might buy a pair of shorts to go along. It can be overwhelming to feel like you have to sew everything, and you definitely don't. Just sew what you want and do what seems enjoyable to you. Okay, let's go back to our machine and sew each leg in place. Just as we did with the casing around the waistband, I'm going to sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric fold. And the hem is a spot where you could use a fun thread color or something like that. This print of the fabric is pretty busy, so you're probably not even gonna notice any thread on the hem here. And then do the same thing to the other side. And let's check it out. Look at that! We sewed a really cool pair of shorts. I'm gonna add one more feature to the front. I'm gonna sew two little buttons right here, purely for cosmetic reasons. I think it looks pretty cute. I've got a needle and thread right here, and I've got two buttons. And you can just place these wherever you want on the front. Again, they're not really serving any function. They're purely just to look cute. I've already tied a knot in the bottom here. I'm gonna come in through the back side here. And then just do this a few times to keep the button in place and to make sure it doesn't fall off. And then I'm gonna tie a little knot in this. Go through one time like that, go through another time, pull it tight, and cut your thread. Tie another knot, and let's sew the other button. Same thing, going through the back. Do that a few times. I love having an excuse to use cute little buttons because if you're a fabric hoarder like me, it's very likely
likely that you're a button hoarder also. Okay, let's tie a little knot here. And there you go. That is a really cute pair of flat front shorts. Good job. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye.